What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Black Desert Online. In this video I'm going to go over several of this game's really cool features including the housing system, workers, nodes, processing, and also talk about crafting all in this video. I've seen a lot of information kind of spread out all over YouTube, so I'm hoping to kind of make something that is in layman's terms and clearly understood and gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to acquire and unlock and understand these features here in this game. So currently I am just making another character and I got up to level 10. This is the third town that I'm visiting in and from here I think this is when things begin to kind of open up and get more interesting. Alright, so let's start off by taking a look here at the world map. There's a lot of really interesting information here and a lot of those features that I just mentioned, including the housing system you interact with through the world map. So for example, here in this third city that I've arrived at, at around level 10, I have the resources. I think that I need to begin getting into the housing, the working system, and unlocking resource nodes and things like that. Let's first start off by taking a look at the housing. If we click on this icon, we can start to see the houses that are available. You can see the ones that I can start off with are highlighted in blue, and the ones that are in gray I cannot access yet. And the reason why I can't access them likely is because they are connected the way a lot of things are here in Black Desert Online through a node system. So for example, we can see that there is this house here, 3-1, and then we can see it's connected by this line, and it's called 3-2. It's actually got two parts, an upper and also a basement. Each house has multiple functions, including being able to allow you to increase storage in that town, have a lodge where your workers can rest, you can have a Sims style kind of layout where you can place furniture and things like that, or it can be a specialty craft workshop where you may, for example, process materials or craft armor, weapons, or all sorts of different things. However, only one function can be served for that house at any given time. So if I want to, for example, rent this place, I have to choose one of those functions. It can't be all of them combined. But by, for example, renting maybe this house here, then it gives me access to be able to rent this place. And it has some unique functions that maybe the other houses in this area do not. Some houses may even have some specialty functions, for example, processing these normal logs into workable wood that may be assembled to create furniture or something like that, or may assemble even larger things. For example, this house here can assemble a carriage for you. So if you have access to this room, then you will be able to bring those parts to this place and then it will assemble a carriage for you, which is really cool. You won't have access to these functions though until you unlock the chain of nodes that connects all of these different houses. So for example, if I wanna to get to this workshop where I can put together a carriage for my character, then I'll first have to start with 2-1, I'll have to unlock 2-2, two, two, and then eventually get 2-3. So let's say, for example, I do want to start unlocking up to 2-3 and be able to get that workshop to put together a carriage. Then what I would need to do is first choose one of the functions here that I want to unlock for this house. Let's say, okay, I'll unlock this first option here and it tells me what the requirements are. I need to spend one contribution point and I currently have seven. So click this button here. It says, are you sure you want to spend that point? I'll hit enter. It's gonna now take two minutes, I guess, for all of the paperwork to finish up until I have that house ready. All right, we've got 10 seconds left until this is finished. Five, four, three, two, one. And there we go. Now that's complete. So I now have access, you can see, to 2-2. So if I want, I can go ahead and rent that. 
You may be wondering why some of these functions have a single arrow and others have multiples. You can kind of look at this as tiers of, uh, of functions. So for example, maybe I am renting this function here. I would start off by getting the first tier and then to unlock or upgrade to the second tier of whatever that function is, it I believe will only cost me money. It won't cost me additional contribution points. Now the interesting thing about this housing system, the contribution points and the money is that when you are using contribution points, that's kind of like a deposit but you can get that deposit back so let's say I want to close up shop I don't need this uh, this house anymore and I want to get my contribution points back so that way I can spend them somewhere else then I'll go ahead and click this it would and then it's like are you sure you want to do that and then I say yes and then now I'm back to seven seven on my contribution points now any money that I spent for unlocking or upgrading though that house is gone I can't get that back it's spent and that's it but it is nice to know that if I am finished with whatever kind of function that I am using that particular place for that I can get those contribution points back and then use them somewhere else. So there's a basic introduction to what the housing system is like here in Black Desert Online. I next want to talk about the NPC workers. They can do a variety of different things for you. They can collect materials. They can process materials into more workable materials for crafting and then actually put those things together and, for example, craft armor for you or weapons or tools or things like that. Your NPC workers aren't doing this for free though. They have their own needs. They need to be fed and housed actually as well. The cool thing is that your first NPC worker, you don't need to rent a, a place for him to stay, but anywhere above that first worker, and you will definitely want to unlock multiple workers, then you will have to use one of these houses and unlock a lodge for them to stay at. So that's actually what I want to first do. I want to find a, a house that looks good to me and then rent it so that way I can have a second worker. My first worker will be cool. I guess he's hanging out at the tavern or whatever, but I want to get a second worker going. So here I'm going to unlock this lodge here and now I can hire a second worker and this is where he will stay. So while we're waiting on that, let's actually go over to the worker NPC and see what workers we can hire for us. In each town, you can go to this icon here, the uh, the pickaxe, and this, I believe, is where you will most commonly, if not always, find these kind of guys that are standing around. These are the workers that you can hire, and there's an NPC nearby that is sort of like their manager. All right, so taking a look here at the NPC that is being offered to me, it is of course gonna cost me the lodge space if I already have one worker hired, and it's also going to cost the silver amount in order to hire this NPC, on top of also the vigor that I just spent just taking a look at this worker. I'll go ahead and hire him, and now he is in my employ. So now that we've got some NPC workers, I want to talk more in depth about the node system here in Black Desert Online. Kind of like we saw here in the towns, the way these houses are connected into a chain. Also, the various resources, farms, and even the towns themselves can all be connected in this node system. Each one of these locations represents a node, and if I want to connect them, for example, for transportation purposes, so that way, maybe for example, my NPC worker can transport goods, then I need to connect these nodes together so that way that's possible. I could, of course, if I want to, simply deliver it myself, but what's the point in having NPC workers if they're not doing mundane stuff like that for you, right? So it starts off by, for example, having a house. You can already see now in this town, because I have uh, some houses unlocked, there is this chain now, this line that is connecting to nearby nodes. And once I unlock those nodes, then I can connect to other nearby nodes. And eventually, it all connects together. Now, each time you do that, it costs you, I believe, your contribution points. So you kind of have to be smart about what nodes you're connecting for what reasons and stuff like that, because you can't simply connect everything all together 
together at one time, you are going to have to kind of pick and choose uh, which is going to serve you for whatever you need at the time. If that sounds confusing, let me just put it in a really simple example. Right now, I've got workers that are doing absolutely nothing for me. What I want them to do is go out there and I want them to do some work for me. Like, for example, collect some resource materials. What I would like them to do is to do some mining at a nearby mining spot. However, I need to go over there and I need to unlock that location so that way my NPC workers can travel over there and start collecting mining materials materials for me. Alright, so I've arrived at the location where the NPC can be found and by talking to him that will give me access to this node and then I can go ahead and start sending workers here. The cool thing about making this trip though is I've actually got a boss monster that I need to fight. At every certain kind of level range there is like a summoned boss fight that you can have and this happens to be the very first one. I believe, here in Black Desert Online. You can see some of the uh, the mining nodes here that, uh, that I could personally get my hands dirty with, but I don't have a pickaxe with me. I'll kind of go into uh, more detail about exactly how you go about gathering materials, processing, and crafting in more detail in another video. So here's the location of where I'm going to engage in this summoned boss fight. You we have a you could I guess that this is kind of like a um, a summoning ritual uh, item here in my inventory. So I'll right click on this, and now this is going to summon the boss that I need to fight. That's really awesome. I love the way they kind of climb out of this like dark abyss. Alright, you ready buddy? Let's do this! Oh, he's ready. Whoa, nice belly flop there. What you got? Let's do this. It's over. Go back to the shadow. <laughs> awesome. Alright, so that is going to lead us into our first look at the Black Spirit. I don't think I've talked about this guy yet, but um, this is a, a friendly ally, I suppose, that we have, and uh, he teaches us a variety of things. He gives us uh, different quests and stuff like that, and it just so happens that uh, he is now pleased because I defeated the summon boss. Sweet, and I leveled up from that as well. So now that makes me level 12, I did do a couple of uh, little quests here and there in between talking about these features. So I'm now sitting at 8 contribution points and I have a new max cap of 12 Vigor. Uh, let's have a chat with this gentleman again. I think he might be happy now. Yes he is. Okay, so now... I'm not entirely sure if that was necessarily uh, related to the summon boss quest, but now we have access to unlocking this mining node area here. So normally you can see uh, this is kind of what one of these resource nodes may look like. You can left click on them here and then there are sub nodes that you can click on and it says first I need to unlock this here. So I'm going to click that. That cost me one contribution point, I believe, just now. Now I can click on the sub node. Unlock that. Yep, that cost me 
another contribution point there. And now I can tell my NPC workers to come to this location and start mining for me. You can see now after unlocking this mining resource location, I have these two nodes connected. That means that I can send NPC workers there to travel to this location and come back and leave in my storage whatever they find. All right, I'm just leaving some items here in the uh, the town storage. This can be found by the icon that looks just like this. This is our storage space here in this town. There you can see that same icon here. So if you're ever looking for it in the town, just uh, Assuming they're not changing the icon anytime soon, just look for that, and that's where the the storage NPC can be found. It's important to make sure that you're not carrying too much stuff. As I mentioned in the the very first video, you have weight limitations. Everything that you carry, even the money that you carry, uh, has weight to it. So if you're carrying too much weight, uh, it will fill up your weight capacity. Same thing with potions. They stack, so it, even though it only takes up one slot, each individual potion weighs something. So if you have too many potions, it's going to weigh you down heavily. Eventually, you're going to suffer a movement penalty of up to 150%, and that is moving extremely slow. So make sure you leave things that aren't necessary for you to carry in the towns. And as I believe I've mentioned before a little bit, things are very much localized in a variety of ways here in Black Desert Online. The things that you store in town are only available in that town. If you leave things in your bank, that's where they're going to be. You won't be able to get them magically from other towns. Same thing with your mounts. If you leave a horse or a donkey parked in this town, then you will have to come to this place to get that mount. They don't just pop out of thin air. Also, other things are localized. For example, the auction houses are localized. So the items that are being sold at the auction house here in this town are only available here at this town. Exploration in Black Desert Online is extremely important. It's going to give you new NPCs that you can have conversations with, that will have uh, special services that you might be interested in. You will more than likely want to go out into the wilds, into various areas in hopes of, for example, finding new materials that you can gather. So for example, if we take a look at the map, currently there is absolutely nothing that can be seen uh, in this area. But pretty soon here, we can see up on the minimap there, it's kind of hard to see actually, but there is a question mark there. These question marks represent NPCs that you are likely to want to talk to because they may be a merchant or they may have some other function. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy. Sure enough, there is somebody here. Have a conversation with him. Ah, and look! He has a resource node. Let's take a look at the map really quick. Now you can see, since I've discovered this NPC here, we have a some kind of herbalism node here. So I can click here to unlock this node and now it gives me access to the sub node. And so just like before, I can send NPC workers here. This time they're not mining for me, they're gonna collect mushrooms. Just like with the housing system, if we no longer have use for whatever the resource node provides, we can get that refunded back to us. So I had that refunded, click on this button again, and now I'm back to five of my eight contribution points. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is my presentation for today on Black Desert Online's housing, worker, node processing, and crafting system. That isn't all, though. There are more details that I can relay to you specifically. I can think of a lot more to talk about in regards to processing and crafting and trading and trade routes and actually quite a number of other things. But I think that this video has gotten long enough. That covers more than likely everything that I know at this time about the basics of how to get started with housing and workers and understanding how nodes connect things here in Black Desert Online. Now I want to hear what you guys have to say. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Click the like button to support these Black Desert Online videos and stay subscribed. More videos are coming up soon. Thanks again for watching. My name is Kinetic and I'll see you next time.